So the Yankees sweep the Red Sox in four straight games and open up, oh my God, open up a commanding five and a half game lead in the division. Now, I'm not sure if that reflects tonight's game. Um, I'm going to have to check the M- MLB. You see, I mean, look at the standings right now as we record this on Sunday night. The point is, they're up by a lot of games. I mean, it's not about what, I mean, how many, if it's six and a half, or five and a half, what's the difference? They are killing in this division right now. And now I think the one thing I think we all feared has happened. You can already hear it in the streets of New York City. The Yankees are back. I mean, they're not just back, but not just like the Yankees that the team is back. The Yankee the Yankee aura, the Yankee intimidation, it's back. And if you thought that it was left behind at the old Yankee Stadium, not necessarily, my friends. The stadium is a big part of a, a team's history and its makeup. But somehow they found it. And somehow they've taken it back. And what did they do to take it back? It's pretty simple. They outpitched the Red Sox in four straight games. And that's, you know, that's really impressive. The Red Sox had, were held to to no runs in they were held to no runs in in uh, Friday's game. By the way, a thriller, which I didn't even bring up. I mean, that game went 15 innings and it was scoreless until a home run hit by Yep, A Rod in the bottom of the 15th won the game for the Yankees 2 to nothing. That was Friday's game. Amazing game, by the way. What a, a thrilling game. I was such I was just privileged to be a part of it to watch the game. Just watching the game, I was excited about it. And then Saturday, CC Sabathia with six perfect innings. No, check that. It was like five, five no hit innings. On his way to a, a shutout, five to nothing. Against the Red Sox, so the Red Sox did not score in <laughs> at least eighteen consecutive innings. I think the total was something like twenty four innings without a run for the Red Sox. That's an incredibly long time not to score a run. The Yankees simply. Outpitched the Red Sox through and through, and these were some pretty good, close games. I mean, you know, even Sunday's game it got out of hand in the eighth, but it was a pretty, pretty tight game up until that point. But oh my goodness, the Yankees are back. The Yankees are now that 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 team with a the swagger. They're the team that can really that they're the team that looks like they are forced to be reckoned with. They look like a team that really could win a championship now. Now, I know that the Red Sox have been playing really terrible baseball. And it's that's not that hasn't changed. That's still the case. It's still true. And I know the Yankees are getting hot, and I know the Yankees have really taken advantage of their stadium and their short porch and their jet stream to to get a lot of their scoring. And I do know that, you know, a lot of their pitchers are overperforming too, especially the bullpen. You know, no question. But we got to give the Yankees a lot of credit today. They have really, really laid the the foot on the gas, and they haven't let go. I mean, a four-game sweep of anybody is very, very hard to do. And a four-game sweep of a division rival and the opponent that was trailing you by a couple of games going in is unbelievable. Unbelievable. It is now... It is now about two weeks into August. Well, let's say about a few days. It's ten days into August. For the Red Sox to overcome this lead, it would take an unbelievable amount from both sides. It would take... A, a, it, first of all, the Red Sox would have to wake up or uninjure themselves, which is really the problem. I mean, it's not that they can't do this or they can't do that or they're not doing this or not doing that. The fact is they're they're just they're just gimpy. It's just not their year. I've said it I said it on Friday, and I think that's the case now. And the Yankees pretty much made that case with a big exclamation point and an underline and bold and a huge ninety six point font. The Yankees are back. Oh, it's scary, all right? For all of us who've hated the Yankees for so long, we just kind of laughed at them the last five years. 
We can't laugh anymore. We got to stop laughing. This team is serious now. I mean, this team is for real. I mean, I know the pitching could fall off at any second. And I know their, their lineup is, you know, very home run heavy, home run happy. And who knows what's going to happen in October. But that's something we worry about later. This team is back. The whole Yankee aura, the dynasty, the, the pinstripes, the championship banners. The only thing that was missing was the intimidation of Yankee Stadium. It hasn't fully come back yet. I mean, you're, it's still kind of a little rit, too ritzy to become a real, you know, intimidating place to play. But that's a minor thing compared to everything else. They've got their confidence back. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, I know that in the past I've been saying, oh, the Yankees just get hot for a month and then the rest of the time they're mediocre. But you don't get hot three times in a row. You don't get hot three times during the same season and then suddenly not become a good team. You know, it's one thing you do for a month. I mean, the Rockies did that at the end of the year in 2007. And certainly New York did it last year for, I don't know, it was like in May or something. But they've had a few of these streaks and you have enough of them, you realize that maybe this team is pretty serious. And it's not like the division they play in is chopped liver. Like, look at the Rays, for example. Now, I know they didn't have the greatest of series against Seattle. That's probably a good point. But they're right in the, in the thick of things. And who isn't in the thick of things now is Boston. Good Lord. You know, it's just not their year. It's not your year. When you have to make these kind of trades, trades, I and mean, these are good trades. I mean, trades for Victor Martinez, who, who really helped them at least get into the game on Sunday night. You know, they, 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 they all their pitchers, like every, all of their pitchers just seem to have fallen onto the DL. All of them. You know, they, they, they if people would have thought that their rotation was, well, you know, it was the best from one to five in the division. But a lot of them got get a lot of them got hurt. I mean, Ma, Dice K Matsusaka got hurt. Brad Penny got hurt, which is well, no flipping surprise to anybody, honestly, if you've been paying attention. But even guys like you know uh, Beckett getting hurt, which isn't uh, also not terribly surprising. But still, you would have thought that maybe he'd have come back, but he didn't. It all adds up to a pretty lousy year. That plus the David Ortiz steroids issue which is precipitated by an ongoing slump anyway. The guy was shot to begin with, and now it's just becoming worse. And now you've just got a team that's just just, just, just gasping for air. And, you know, with a team like that, you, you have to be careful if you're the team playing that team. And the Yankees were that team. The Yankees were playing a team that was really on the mat. But if, for instance, Boston came in and won three out of four, or they split the series or something like that, then all of a sudden they get a lot of life back, even though they're playing with like half of their players. And then other players come back, and then all of a sudden the Red Sox are in, on a resurgence. So it was important for the Yanks not to let up. But they, how could they? How could they let up at this point? How could they have possibly have eased into the series? Knowing that they lost the first eight games, knowing that they have a lot to prove, knowing that there's a lot of critics talking about, well, they're not the same Yankees anymore because the stadium is too nice now, which is true, by the way. But their stadium is too nice, and they, they've lost all their history and everything because they moved out of the stadium, and, and they don't have the same owner anymore. It's not the same. It's not the same. Well, it's not the same. They don't have the same manager they used to. They don't have the same field. They don't even have the same broadcaster they used to 10, 15 years ago. But they have a confidence and an attitude which evokes the memories of 78. Evokes memories of the 26, 28, I'm sorry, 28. Evokes the memories of the 50s and the early part of the 60s. The Yankees are back, man. And whether we like it or not, they are going to be the team in the American League going into these playoffs, whether we like it or not. And, you know, it's good and it's bad. You know, it's good to see. It's good to see one of the perennial franchises in sport a big part of the playoff picture. It's a good thing in the in overall, no question. 
It's also a bad thing because then all the bandwagons are coming back. You get all those guys that have been just sitting around just trying to find a team to play. <laughs> all the Philly fans, some of the Philly fans are going to be Yankee fans again. You know, the, the bandwagoners are coming back. That's unfortunate. And then all the talk about the Yankees are the greatest thing in the universe. And that's coming back too. You know, if the coverage of the Yanks was bad enough, I mean, it's going to be even bigger. The Yankees are back. And... Well, we're, we're we're pretty much going to have to be ready for it, and whether we are or not, they're here. And no, they're not going to get blown out in the first round. They, they can't be now. I mean, Joe Girardi has that team set. He has their head on straight. I think they really want to prove something, and this is the first time the Yankees have been in this position where they have to prove themselves as a legitimate team. The last time they had to do this, I would say it would be sometime in around 1995 through 1997. That's when they had to prove that they belonged. You know, they weren't known as, oh, the dynasty in 96. No, I mean, they were playing the Braves, and everybody thought the Braves were just going to steamroll them. Everybody remembers this. If you've been following baseball for the last 20 years, certainly you know. And here we are again, the Yankees trying to draw from their history, their tradition, their pride, their power, but more importantly, their resolve. You know, the, the the tradition and the history is all nice, but it doesn't affect this team. But what does affect this team is their desire. And somehow Joe Girardi has helped them get that desire, but obviously their pitching has been better. And I think that's been the bottom line for this team for the last decade. It's the pitching that's been their problem. My God, everybody's like, well, they don't have the confidence. Well, they don't have this. Oh, they had this jinx against Anaheim. Dude, it's the it's the pitching. You know, they had the flashy lineup. They had the home runs and everything back in about five, six years ago. And in 2004, well, they looked nice. I mean, they looked like they had all the big names. But they didn't have the pitching. They didn't have that kind of pitching. They didn't have lockdown pitching then. Well, they didn't have even a solid pitching staff. They didn't have the best bullpen Outside of Mariano Rivera, and I've said already said before that one man doesn't make a bullpen. The guys, they didn't have anybody to get him the ball. But now they have some guys who are, of course, pitching out of their minds, but this is how bullpens work. But more importantly, the, the rotation has been a lot more, has finally kind of built up to its, uh, its, its, its hype. And guys like Jabba Chamberlain, who everybody thinks should have been in the bullpen, is doing a pretty good job. And guys like Andy Pettit, who thought was over the hill, I, I did, certainly, is doing a good job. And guys like A.J. Burnett, who's pretty much just pretty much a cowboy just riding that fastball, is striking people out, and he's doing an okay job. And C.C. Sabathia, it's hard to believe that anybody who got paid $160 million or whatever it was is worth the money, but he's pitching very well so far, so he's doing a good job. You're talking about a rotation that's doing pretty well. And I think together, they could make some serious noise in the playoffs. They could. I'm not saying they will. But the bottom line is, get ready for the Yankees. Because the Yankees, as we knew them before, have returned. And it's 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 frightening if you're, if you're fans of other teams or if you're not into the whole Yankee aura and whatever. But they're here. And they're not going away. And that's is going to be the definitive moment of the Yankees season that really defined them as being, once again, a powerhouse. This weekend, this date, August the 9th, which was yesterday, 2009, the Yankees are 